In section 2.3, we focused on two set Venn diagrams. In section 2.4, we moved to three set Venn diagrams. Now, there's really two parts to this lecture. We're going to focus on shading first. Um, you can approach three set Venn diagrams using the same methods we did with two set, or you can use um, a shading approach where you look at the regions that you want to focus on specifically. Now, when I'm giving this as a lecture, I usually start with the other packet first, get partway through that, and then switch to this shading packet. But I think that we're gonna we're gonna tackle it separately today. Um, you're gonna need a sharpened pencil because we are gonna be shading, so make sure that you you have a sharpened pencil on hand. Stop and grab that if you don't. Um, you see that we have our Venn diagram set up with the, the three loops and none of it is labeled, but we are going to consistently label it all the same way. We have our universal set in the box and then we have A on the left, B on the right, and C below. Now it is not necessary to label it like this in this order, but if we all have it labeled the same way, it's gonna be a lot simpler as we go through. So if I want to do those labelings, ahead of time, I can do that really quickly. Um, my setup here to hold my uh, Microsoft Surface Pro doesn't allow me a lot of space when I have to switch to landscape instead of portrait view. Okay, so I've got my universal set is my box and my sets A, B, and C for each of these. Now when we go through, um, when we go through the other packet, we're going to label our regions. When we separate, when we have three loops available, we create eight total regions. Now we're going to label them with Roman numerals in our other packet, but I'm going to go ahead and just label them regularly uh, with Arabic numerals here. So we have region one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the region outside the loop still inside my universal set is region eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Region five is a part of all three loops. It's part of A, B, and C. Region two is part of A and B. Region four is part of A and C. Region six is part of B and C. Region one is just A. Region three is just B. Region seven is just C. All right, so we are gonna start out and do some shading. Number one, this first, uh, this first Venn diagram, it tells us to shade the universal set. Well, when I shade the universal set, I am shading everything, the entire box, all eight regions. All right. Now, typically, students take this packet, they keep it with them when they're doing homework, and they can use it to reference the different shaded regions to back up and check and see how they've done on their work. All right, if I'm asked to shade loop A or set A, I'm gonna shade re all the, the A sectors or A regions, everything in that A loop. So I'm shading four different regions, regions one, two, four, and five. One, two, four, and five. If I'm asked to shade C, I'm looking at that C loop, that C circle, and I'm shading those four regions that are included in the C circle, four, five, six, and seven. Then I get to some of the terms that we have done. This is an intersection. My keyword is and. So I'm only interested in the regions that are in loop A and B. Well, this is loop A and this is loop B. So these two regions right here are in loops A and B. That's region two and region five. We have four, five, six, seven. Here we have one, two, four, five are the numbers of our regions. How about A or B though? When I switch my symbol and it looks like a U, that keyword is or, and remember that's my inclusive or. So if it's an A or B or both, I'm gonna count it. So I'm gonna shade everything in the A circle as well as the B circle or the B circle. This is just the regions that are in both at the same time. 
This is the regions that are in either one or both. Okay. Then down here at six, we have not A. That's my complement, everything that's not inside A. Number two, I shaded A. When I shade not A, I identify that A loop, and then I shade outside that loop instead of inside that loop. When I shaded A, I shaded four regions. When I shade not A, or A complement, or A prime, I'm shading the other four regions. Um, on number three, I shaded C. On number seven, you need to shade everything that is not in C. C complement. So I identify the C loop and I, sh I shade the four regions outside that loop. All right, for number eight, we are shading A minus C. A is my starting place. That's what I'm focusing on, loop A. But then I need to exclude the regions that are also in C. So I'm going to not include those. I'm going to take those two out, which means I just shade these two regions, regions one and two. That is A, loop A, without C, A minus C. And then number nine asks us to go the other way and do C minus A. So my starting place now is loop C. I've got to think about all four regions in loop C. And I need to take out, I need to exclude the two that are also in A. So I'm just shading the other two. This time it's regions six and seven. Okay, so there is that first page of things shaded. Like I said, we look, usually students use this to look back on as they do other homework to check and make sure that they're referencing the correct places. On the next page, we are addressing all three loops, all three sets. So again, we have our universal set in the box with loops A, B, C in the same order that we have been applying them because that consistency makes things easier. For number 10, I've got the intersection of all three. Where does A intersect B and also intersect C? Well, which region or regions are part of all three loops? Just this one inner region, region five, is part of all three loops. What about A or B or C? Remember my or, my union, if it's part of one, it's part of the union. So here I'm looking for anything that is inside a loop, which means I'm shading everything but that region eight that is outside the loops. I'm shading everything inside. All right, now we have a pro few problems to consider. We're getting to some more complex uh, set theory. Remember, we need to approach our intermediate sets first. So we look inside the parentheses first. This is the intersection of complement A, not A, with the union B or C. So what operations do I need to perform first? Well, first I need to know not A, and I also need to know B or C. I need to know both of those things before I can find the, where they intersect, what they both contain together. So I need to draw Venn diagrams to represent each of those intermediate steps. When I draw my Venn diagrams, I'm gonna draw them just like the final diagram with the three loops. I've got A, B, C, A, B, C. Okay. So when I shade not A, it's everything outside of A. We already did that once, everything outside of A. So we leave the four regions inside the A loop and we shade the other four. When I shade B or C, that's my union of B with C. So if it's in B or in C or in both, I shade it. So it's these four B regions plus those other two regions that are C. Now, I'm going to look at the work from that problem, and it might be easier to talk about numbering our regions. If we number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's our numbered regions. Like I said, typically we use Roman numerals, but we're doing it kind of quickly here, so I'm just using regular Arabic numerals. 
When I'm using those work from above, these two intermediate sets, I'm looking for the intersection, the and of these two shaded intermediate steps. So I'm looking for what regions are shaded in both. Well, one is not shaded in either. Two is shaded in both. So I'm going to shade it as part of the intersection. Oh, two is not shaded in both. I'm sorry, guys. Two is not shaded here. Two is shaded here. I, I got distracted. Two is not shaded here. So we don't shade it. Hope you're using your pencil. <laughs> we don't shade two because it's not shaded over here on my not A. Three, however, is shaded in both. Three is shaded on the left. Three is shaded on the right. So three gets shaded as part of our intersection. Um, four is only shaded in one, so it's not part of the intersection. Five is only shaded on one, so it is not part of the intersection. Six is shaded in both, so it is part of the intersection. And then seven is shaded in both, so it's part of the intersection. Eight is only shaded over here, so it is not. So this is the completed problem. This is the answer that I was looking for here. The intersection of complement A with B or C is represented by these three shaded regions. Now, you cannot just guess at these. You really have to look at them some way. And by shading, that's one way to approach it. Another way to approach it is by using roster form, by making lists. But we're focusing on shading right now. We'll come back and do the roster form in the next video. Okay, let's do another problem. Problem 13, we have another compound set theory problem where we have the union of, so we're looking for a union of, or comparing A with B minus C. So what do I need to know first? Well, first I need to know A, and I also need to know B minus C. Once I get those two Venn diagrams, I can use them to put them together and find the union of the two. All right, so we have our Venn diagram space labeled. Now when you do written work and I ask you to shade, this is the, thing I, the kind of thing I'm expecting to see. Make sure you draw the box because that defines your universal set, that region eight. If you haven't, don't have a box, you're missing part of it. Okay, A. Well, A are those four regions inside my A loop. B minus C, I start with four regions included in B, but I exclude the two that are also part of C. So B minus C are those two regions right there. So if I go back and number my regions again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This time I'm looking for the union. So if it's shaded in either intermediate Venn diagram, either intermediate step, I shade it as part of the union. Well, region one is shaded over here, so it's part of the union. Region 2 is shaded in both, so it's part of the union. Region 3 is shaded on the right, so it is part of the union. Remember, union is either, or, or both. Region 4 and 5 are shaded over here on the left, so they are both shaded as part of the union. 6, 7, and 8 aren't shaded at all, so they are not part of the union. So that is what that problem needs to look like, problem number 13. Okay, let's look at the next page. We have a little investigation here. It asks us, well, it, it has us fill in the blank. To prove a statement true, what kind of reasoning do we use? Well, we have to start with general case, and that is my deductive reasoning. I start with general and I move to specific. This requires you start with a general case or any number. If we're in algebra, we use any number represented by a variable. If we're doing set theory, 
we're going to use Venn diagrams without values inside, just looking at those general regions to prove statements true. Now, the last three pages we've done where we're shading regions, those are general Venn diagrams. This is all deductive reasoning work. We don't have a specific set of sets. We don't have values for A, values for B, values for C. We're looking at the general shape, the regions that would be shaded. That's how we prove set theory true, using Venn diagrams. So previously, um, oh, this was in the other, the, the other packet we haven't done yet, so not previously. So what do you think? Do you think that these two sets are equal or not? Now remember, we're talking about three loop Venn diagrams where we have A, B, and C, even though B is not mentioned here. What do you think? Do you think the difference of A minus C complement and A complement minus C complement will be the same, or do you think they'll be different? Well, write down what you think, and let's prove. Let's find out if you're right or wrong. So we are going to need to use two separate areas. We're going to start with A minus C complement over here. All right. Um, let me sketch this out. We've got A, B, C, A, B, C, and this is my universal set, A, B, C. So sketch your Venn diagrams for this first one. And then we're going to do the same for the second one. So for the first one, we need to know A minus C first, and then we use that to find the complement of that. So that will be our second step. For A prime minus C prime, we have to know A prime. We have to know A complement. Then we also have to know C complement. So we have to set it up twice as an intermediate step. We need to know A complement. We also need to know C complement or not C. So I'm going to sketch my Venn diagram. Notice these are kind of sloppy. I'm not worried if your circles are exactly circled. You do need to make sure you have all eight regions represented, that you can see all eight regions. Once I have A prime and C prime, then I can do A prime minus C prime and compare it to the complement of A minus C to see if they are the same regions shaded. All right, so there's our setup. Those are the Venn diagrams we need. So for this first side, we need to know A minus C before we know the complement of A minus C. Well, A minus C, I start with my A loop, and then I take out anything that's in C, so I would just shade these two regions, regions one and two. When I take the complement of that, instead of shading regions one and two, I'm going to shade the other six regions. I'll shade everything but regions one and two. So I'm gonna shade region eight all the way around, region three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, I get all of that shaded. Then I move to this other side to see if A minus C complement is going to be the same thing as A complement minus C complement. Can I, my question basically is, does this complement, this prime, just distribute inside my parentheses or not? Okay, A prime means not A, so that's everything outside A. So I don't shade the four regions inside my A loop. I shade the other four. In C prime, not C, I don't shade inside my C loop. I shade the other four regions, those regions outside the C loop. Okay, now to do A prime minus C prime. A prime is my starting place. So I'm starting thinking about these four regions that are shaded here. Then I'm going to take away or erase or not shade anything that is shaded in C prime. So I'm not even going to consider shading these four regions. They stay blank because they're not part of my starting place. Region 8 is part of my starting place. It's shaded. 
but I don't include it because I'm taking it away as part of C prime. So what about region three here? I take it away because it's shaded as part of C prime. Region four isn't shaded, five isn't shaded, six is shaded. Look there, I get to shade six because I don't take it away as part of C prime. Seven needs to be shaded because I don't take it away, it's not part of C prime. So here are the things I'm comparing. I'm seeing if they are equal to each other. Is A minus C quantity prime, the complement of A minus C, the same thing as A prime minus C prime? Well, obviously not. I've got six regions shaded here and only two regions shaded here. So they are not equal. And you have to decide, was your hypothesis true or false? We have proved through deductive reasoning, so this is a for sure because we use general Venn diagrams, that these two uh, sets are not equal to each other. Okay, let's do a couple more. Before you shade in the specified set, determine which order you should shade them in. And it refers us back to nine and 10 earlier. Show and label clearly any intermediate sets that you have to shade in. Now, if you are asked to do written assignment with this, I expect to see shaded intermediate sets. Okay, so for number one, it tells us to shade in the intersection of A prime and B prime. Well, before we can do that, we have to decide what do we do first? Do we do A prime, then B prime, or do we do the intersection first? order of operations, what I need to see is A prime as well as B prime to see where they intersect. Those are my intermediate Venn diagrams that I need to produce. So I set up my three loops, A, B, C. I'm looking for A prime with this one and I'm looking for B prime with that one. A prime is anything not A, so it's everything outside the A loop. Make sure you shade enough so that I can tell what's shaded and what's not. B prime is everything outside the B loop. And then the answer that I'm looking for is the intersection of that. So I'm looking to say what regions are shaded in both. Well, if I, if I go through and I think about numbering my regions like I have been, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is region one shaded in both? No, it's not. Is region two shaded in both? No, it's not. Is region three shaded in both? No, it's not. Four is not. Five is not. Six is not. Seven is. Seven is part of the intersection. It's shaded in both. And eight is shaded in both. So only regions seven and eight are in the intersection of complement A with complement B. So regions seven and eight need to be shaded. For this next one, we're told to find A intersect B, and for some reason that prime didn't come out. I'm gonna to have to go back and fix that. Um, A intersect B prime, so the complement of that. I want you guys to figure out what you need to shade first. What is your intermediate step? Do that and then fill this in. Pause your video, complete number two, and then come back. Okay, this is what your results should look like. You first had to know what was inside parentheses, A intersect B, that's those two regions right there, two and five. The complement of that, the complement of A intersect B is going to be everything except regions two and five. So it's everything outside of those two regions. There are two more problems on the next page. I'm missing a complement mark again, so I want you to fix that if it's not already fixed on your guided notes. 
And I want you guys to think about this. We've got A prime or B prime, and then we have A or B complement of that, of that um, group right there. So what do we need to know first? For three, first we need to know A prime, then B prime. And for four, first we need to know A or B. So I want you to pause the video again. I want you to do these intermediate sets, finish the problem, and then start it again, and we'll talk about the results and about De Morgan's Law. Okay, so here we go. Um, first, you need to do your intermediate diagrams, not A, not B, and then I'm asked to see what the union of those. The union includes anything shaded in either of the two intermediate steps, so it's everything except regions two and five. Then for number four, we have to start with the, the union of A or B. So we shade everything in A or B or both. And we take the complement of that. So we shade everything else. All right. De Morgan's Law is based on problems one, two, three, and four. So I want you to look at the shading you did in problems one, two, three, and four. Um, there we go. Shadings for one, two, three, and four. And if you look at them, you should notice that A and B complement shades the same area as A prime or B prime. They have the same shading, the same regions. At the same time, A prime and B prime shades the same regions as the quantity A or B prime. So I'm going to, to write that down in this De Morgan's Law section. De Morgan's Law shows us that A and B quantity complement is equal to, includes the same regions as A prime or B prime, while A union B quantity complement includes the same regions as A prime and B prime. I want you to look at those two equivalency statements and find the pattern. With arithmetic, multiplication distributes across addition. So that, for example, if we had 2 times a plus b, that 2 would just distribute in and we would end up with 2a plus 2b. Distribution is not a property like that with set theory. I can think about distributing this prime, this complement idea inside my parentheses, but when I do that, notice that the symbol changes. If I'm taking the, the complement of the quantity A and B, that symbol switches when I think about distributing inside that complement, and it becomes the union instead of the intersection. When it starts union here, it becomes intersection. So that, that symbol reverses. That's what we call the Morgan's Law for set theory.